I'm Richard Porter. I'm Johnny Smith. And this is Smith and Sniff, a podcast in which two friends talk about cars and many other things. Hey, 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 it's quiz time. It's quiz time. I've got a, like a micro quiz for you. Oh, okay. It's called the Kia quiz. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Is okay. the answer A, the Stonic, B, the Kia Stinger, C, the Kia Starmer? Which one do you drive? <laughs> is, that, is that it? Is that That's the it. Stonic, Stinger or Starmer, which one do you drive to work in? Or be on it, down <laughs> off of the back lanes? Kia Stinger's what, quite a nice car, isn't it? It's a, I love it's a, the Stinger. I, I can't remember. Have I driven the Stonic? No. I guess you sort haven't. of quite like the look of the Stonic. You know? It's got a sort of chunkiness to it that's appealing in its own kind of way, if you like that kind of thing. There's a Hyundai that's out called the Bayou or Bayan or something. Bayan. Have you seen this? Bay, what, the Bayern Tapestry or the, the Bayern, Bayern, Tapestry, Mu- Bayern yeah. Munich Football Club? <laughs> I think it is. That's it. The Hyundai Bayern Munich Football Club. It's endorsed uh, by all the players. They've just bought it. They've just bought a chunk of Hyundai and said, on the proviso that we make one called the Bayern M- Munich. And but what like, does mm. it cost to develop a new car these days? Billion dollars or something? So for yeah. footballers, they could just pool their resources, develop a brand yeah. new car, and then wherever it goes, it promotes their football club. I don't... I don't. Yeah. A bit like cricketers getting... Free I don't cars. know. Free like X say, types, yeah, yeah we, like we were talking about in previous happen. podcasts. Hey, but I, I, but I also heard that Lewis Hamilton is chipping in to buy Chelsea Football Club off of mm. definitely not crooked Roman um, Akrapovic. <laughs> chipping in, yeah, yeah. And, and, I, With, and I thought, oh my gosh, is he ri- is he that wealthy? Well, I think he is, isn't he? You can just buy Chelsea with um, Serena Williams and like mm. another bloke that he met down the pub. Yeah, really. <laughs> it just <laughs> when I say another a bloke, I don't mean a Serena friend. Williams is a bloke. I mean just uh, uh, there's a third one, isn't there? Though who's I think leading it, but it's a guy. It's like a friend of a friend that he met at someone's birthday drinks in an all bar one That's... about ten years ago, and <laughs> um, they just kept in touch. And they were so... like, "Listen, I've got an idea. I've I've I've, I've, I've I came back from the gym and I just thought, Do you know what." Chris Evans buys boozers now and again. Jeremy makes his own beer and he's got a farm. I think I might. Yeah, I might buy a really expensive football club. Do you know, I don't even care about football. I don't even care if they su- succeed or not. I might just buy it. It'd be nice, yeah, wouldn't just it? Just for fun. Just cause... Somewhere to sit at the weekend. Yeah, yeah. Something to do, isn't it? It's a yeah. hobby. People yeah. go, what have you been up to? Uh, I don't know, not a lot. Obviously, the racing's pretty much taking up a lot of my time and I have to go to the yeah. gym quite a bit. Uh, and uh, oh yeah, I bought Chelsea Football Club. Um, did I mention that? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah, going yeah, all right. Yeah. It's uh, good. We've, I've been learning some amazing racist chants. It's been really cool. <laughs> Enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah, it's just a bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. went and uh, went and sat in the crowd with a bunch of absolutely insufferable assholes <laughs> for a bit. Uh, I'm not saying Chelsea fans are insufferable assholes. Only some of them. But no, I'm sure no, you can apply no. that to almost any. Yeah. Football club but I find myself I find myself uh, opening my bedroom window uh, in the middle of the night, pointing at a fox or anything that might be moving, and shouting, "Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> Who's the wanker in the red?" Yes, exactly. Yes, it's either Father Christmas or a fox. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> that's my Christmas Eve sewn up this year. Bloody hell, that's going to be amazing. Who are you? Who's the wanker in the red? Who are you? Oh, it's, listen, mate, it's Father Christmas. Just stop pissing around and ruining <laughs> yes. the surprise. Go away. Sod off. I'm busy. Um, well, yes, so okay, Lewis so Hamilton st- potentially view. buying buying Chelsea. I don't know where we're up to with that. I'll be honest, I haven't been paying that much attention. But um, No. Yes. He's just copying Ryan Reynolds, but with slightly more money, it seems. Yeah. I wonder, though, how much disposable income Lewis Hamilton has, because I can't remember what he earns. Because it's not just from Mercedes; it'll be from sponsorship deals and stuff. I was going. This is what I was going to ask you this because I didn't know. I figured I, you'd yeah. know. No, I should know. Should well, should I? I don't know. Is it my job? Possibly, but uh, I do know it's quite expensive being a Formula One driver. Because apart from that, apparently their life insurance is really expensive. Well, yeah, I would expect. I mean, my life insurance is expensive, so mm. why why shouldn't theirs be? Yeah. Um, and you, yeah. Well, I don't risk anything anymore. I don't know. So when I used to do thing, TV, it was risky. It was expensive. Well, the other thing is having a private jet, which Lewis Hamilton does, is got to yeah. be horribly expensive because 
they they just they just eat money, don't they? They just there's no such thing as having a cheap jet. It's just not no. possible. No. Every day you're going to be getting calls. Ah, uh, yeah, Mr. Hamilton, I'm afraid we need to polish your jet. And you're like, okay, yeah, go ahead and polish it. I've got some turtle wax in the shed. Actually, you can go and grab it. No, no, no. <laughs> you have to use special aeroplane polish, and yes. it's nine thousand pounds a litre. And you go, oh, fuck's sake! All right, go on then. <laughs> uh... So I don't imagine that he actually has as much disposable income as you might think between all of the um, special aeroplane screen wash that he has to buy and <laughs> life insurance and. And Mon- Monaco renting, is there Monaco-related re- rent? Well, now, or is there... he's in Switzerland, I think, now. Oh, is he? Yeah. What, a little bit, little bit more boring than Monaco? Yeah, for people who find yeah. Monaco not weird and boring enough. <laughs> <laughs> That's Honestly, on the tourist board literature. Monte Carlo, now 17% more weird and boring. I Have you ever been to, to Monaco and just wandered around a bit and gone, I think I'd rather just pay the tax. I'd rather live up the coast in France yeah, and yeah. just pay tax, but enjoy the beauty of the, of the, the, I'm the coast. I'm definitely, well, and also having talked to Mr. Jason Plato about life in Monaco, which might not be an accurate reflection on life in Monaco, but I... Yeah, this is through the lens <laughs> of Jason Plato. <laughs> so I'm not going to take, don't, please don't take that as, as verbatim. But I have to say, I, I thought, I came away thinking the same thing, came thinking away, just because you're saving money, you're, it's your life. Like, you're, you're restricting your life because you're going to save a few quid. That just mm. seems a bit... bit like shallow, and odd. Mm. Um, I do it, worry but, about the ratio of twats as well. I'm, oh, it's I'm a high gonna... twat environment, definitely. Imagine, yeah. imagine the amount of sort of leathery. Oh, it's oh, a... horrible people, and <laughs> it's, it's it's a yeah. song by John Lennon. Imagine all the Monaco twats. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure Just that you actually can. <laughs> Who blows an eye lifts and you just go, just shit off a lot of you. Pay some tax, you stingy twats. Um, but that's just me. I don't know. Maybe it's more pleasant than it seems at, 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 Maybe. on the surface. Maybe we're being Does, Potato doesn't live there anymore, though, does he? No, no, he, he just got told to live there for um, two years, was it? I think, yeah, I think he just did <laughs> he a two-year stint. It wasn't a tax thing, it was just a, just a prank. <laughs> oh, Jason, you got going. It's also the fact that you can imagine how much money you do have as, say, a Formula One driver, and, yeah. and yet, essentially, you just have to live in a flat. Yeah, and you don't and own like, it. For the money that you're spending here, you could have a vast mansion in some beautiful part of the world, but no. Yeah. You can live in a flat with overlooking yeah. some other flats with a very, very slender little bit of sea visible between two buildings. Yeah, what is that about? I mean, the more we talk about it, the more it seems ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, just... I mean, that's, I suppose if you're earning, I don't know, $20 million a year, the tax potentially on that is, I suppose, near as damn it half, isn't it? Well, it's not. It's 40, what, 40% plus... But you've got to pay NI as well, haven't you? Which is it's quite weird to think that Lewis Island. Hamilton still has to pay national insurance if he's a UK taxpayer, which I guess he's not because he lives in Switzerland. But if he comes back here, he'd be like, what, NI? Oh, God, really? Uh, OK. Well, what, I just, there's got to be... Also, it's not a very good place to drive if you're interested in cars, is it? I, I, I see people buy supercars in Monaco and then you realise that supercars don't fit in Monaco. So it's a bit of an odd combination, yeah. isn't it? But then you are quite like close a, to, um, you know, all those sort of coals up up into the mountains, aren't you? Collins in the mountain? <clears throat> Collins, yeah, yeah. Go up and Lots see of... one coal and he's like, yeah, yeah, um, go and see the other one. I, I, I do think when you get onto those, those hairpinny sort of mountain roads, yeah. they're not fun to drive. They just become annoying. Because if you're going up, it's just lots of low gear. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're going down, you're just like, oh fuck, my brakes. It's not. It's not yeah. enjoyable. You're just fighting gravity. There's there's much nicer roads to drive than one of those hairpinny sort of mountain roads. It'd be good in a light car, but I think if you were something something a little bit roidy and front heavy, like an Audi, an RS Audi. I think it would just get the brakes would start stinking. So you yeah. and your passenger would get out smelling of old mackerel. 
Yeah. And then what it's a where it, it's true though, isn't it? Because brakes do smell like old mackerel. Yeah. 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 Um, and the, the thing would be sort of nose diving when you were trying to neatly thread it round a corner. What you want is you want something nice and narrow and 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 light, so it's not too hard on the brakes. Doesn't need a ton of power, but can get get off the line reasonably well. Hmm. I'm, I'm trying leaks. to think what we. T- yeah, I was thinking Renault Five Gordini. Oh, but probably a little bit leany on the suspension. Probably should have gone yeah. for something a, a, a leany Gordini. <laughs> leany Gordini. <laughs> See more uh, from there later. Um, <laughs> I yeah, I'd go. No, I'd definitely go something that's a bit lower and lighter. Yeah. But okay. Something. I don't know. Do you know what? I bet you'd have the most fun in like a rented Clio or something. Because first of all, you wouldn't give a toss about the brakes because they belong to Hertz, and and secondly, it's just you're just sort of you're not desperately trying to use all of the power and handling because it hasn't got that much of either. But so no. it's sort of more <laughs> amusing. Oh, Peugeot two hundred five GTI. Ooh, how about that? Yeah, very yeah, light, yeah. V- good throttle response. Yeah, Fr- frisky, Ooh. narrow, fits yeah. on the road. Has a still has a very attractive bum. And and that lovely big glass sunroof. So when you know you have to stop at a couple of corners to let the mackerel smell go away, but also yeah. take a couple of piss vista pictures. You'd also yeah. need a piss while you were there, because of course, that's the point of a piss vista. Um, and then you put it on Instagram, a bit like uh, you were talking to me the other day about uh, it was about Ream, wasn't it? The um, the Ream no, circuit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The obligatory photo. The obligatory um, photo. It is, isn't it? <clears throat> well, I was also the. I was just doing what exactly what I think. Two hundred five GTIs for a fuel injected car. They have a slightly claggy throat, don't they? Mm, mm. When they don't, they don't. There's sort of a slight. <clears throat> when you just from they not do. idle, they have a claggy, claggy idle or claggy yeah. rev, initial rev response. Because uh, you are spot on there. It is. Um, it's a little bit like they could be lactose intolerant, but they're not willing to admit it. Yeah. Or it's just, um, is, is your car okay? Yeah, it's just, it had a double espresso and, and some toast just before I switched it on. And look, it's just, uh, and it hasn't had a glass of water yet. Yeah, yeah I, think it it also, I think it has allergies. Now it's the sun's come out. I think it's got allergies. It just, uh, and then it's fine. It's hiding the allergies, isn't it? It's living in denial. It's mm. very, you are good with that. It's true. It's very true. The exhaust note isn't indicative i don't think of the smoothness of the way the engine pulls i can't hear a 205 exhaust in my head i'm trying to think it's sort of they slightly raspy yes metallic and um, yes metallic they're almost almost like there's an exhaust bracket at the back slightly loose yes <laughs> almost i don't mean that in a i don't mean to to, to detract from the amazement and the allure of the 205 gti but it, it's almost like there is a bit of a raw rough and ready come on then come and have a go if you think you're fucking hard enough come on yeah oh I yeah about it no they're, they're brilliant they are proper hot hatchback in that i quite like in fact i love the hot hatchbacks that feel like the engine is a little bit too big for the car like it's trying to burst out like and the, like, and the 205 like an GTI's alien like that. from the chest of a person exactly Yes. And I think the the best of the hot Clios have that feeling <clears throat> about them. They do actually. And, yeah, they do. Um, I'm trying to think what else does. It's like Golf GTIs don't. I like Golf GTIs, no. but they don't have that feeling. They're a bit too sort of, you know, almost like yes. they, they refined that out. Whereas, yeah, Peugeot and Renault like to leave it in because it's a it's an interesting yeah. sensation for the enthusiastic driver. It's it. Yeah, my mate, when we were 18, had a Citroen ZX Volcane. Ooh. Yeah, a bit of a rare groove now, I would have thought. Yeah. And um, basically, it, he realised it was it was a lot cheaper to insure than a 205 GTI, yet basically was a 205 GTI. Um, had, it, had a terrific oil usage um, <laughs> habit, but it was, it, was, it was a proper, you know, um, blue plume. Uh, on every startup job, <laughs> <laughs> there was always a blue plume. Quite a, quite a good name for some kind of land speed record attempt car. The blue plume. <laughs> Why is it called that? Well, it does use a lot of oil as I'm spearing across the salt flats. <laughs> I'm actually topping it up with a yes. small funnel when I go over about 230. 800 miles an hour. <laughs> 
I get a face full of uh, 1040 weight. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a, the ZX Volcane. It was actually a bit of a weapon. Um, I wonder how many are left. Well, now. I just I just went on Cairo Classic to see if there's any oh, for gosh. sale. And of course no. you did. There's a what? ZX oh, really? 1.4 SX. Now, I bet... That is a lovely car to drive because they were they were of that era when even the basic ones, the ones you might get as a hire car, yeah. were just delightful. Um, it's two grand, and it's a couple of small issues to note. The advert says sunroof is stuck, and it has a CV joint click on turning. We'll try to resolve both of these if I get chance. Oh, that's really charming Which, and honest. I think I just commit to either fixing them or not. One hundred six thousand miles, two grand. It's it's got some re- those really terrible aftermarket wheel trims that sort of look like Ronald teddy bears. Oh no, wait, it has. Oh. I beg your pardon. It's got one <laughs> on I one know. front wheel. <laughs> it's only got what? one. No, wait, it's got two. I'm just I'm going through the pictures as we speak. It's got so it's got these faux Ronald teddy bear look trims on the front wheels, and what I believe to be the correct factory Citroen wheel trims on the back wheels. Why, Why do people would you do, do this? this? Why do people do Why? this? Like wearing odd shoes and not referencing <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> just can't do it. <laughs> just, but it's, the thing is, you must. I'm sure they only sold those Halfords wheel trims in a set of four. So why would you just not put them on all of the wheels? And at least it looks consistent, even it's if just, they're toss. It's just a shit idea. It's like Richard, you've got a Doctor Martin on your left foot and a moccasin on your right. Do you know this? And you're out in a public place. Yeah, yeah, no, oh, fine. Well, I'm it's okay. I think it actually I looks quite good. I'm all right with it. I'm okay with you it. You remember what the adverts used to say? Never mix wheel trims uh, across different axles. You're like, no, that's that's not what it said at all. You. Pre- <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's I don't know. It looks they're, they're kind of. It's funny how when you don't see cars around anymore, you, you're able to sort of reassess the design because familiarity hasn't sort of dulled it. Really and, true. And the ZX is not a bad looking car. Quite sort of. It's weird how at the time I think people thought it was maybe a bit bland. And actually, you look at it now and you kind of go, it's quite citrony looking. I think it's because it sort of sits a bit high at the back. It has a tiptoe on the back, doesn't it? A little bit it of a does. tiptoe. Yeah, yeah, it's got a bit of a sort of Adrian Newey stance, where it's just just nose down. Is he a but... bit? Is he a, is he a bit of a, a bit of a nose down? Oh, a lot of his racing cars in recent times have had the sort of nose. That's kind of, I mean, you know, we're talking millimeters because they're F1 cars, but yeah, nose down. It's a shame a that it's only millimeters. Well, rather than <laughs> it's like a foot and a half. <laughs> I'd quite like if it was a sort of seventies street machine cover car. And it, at the at the, the detriment of the entire drive and competitive nature of the car, he's like, no, but that's the way I want it to sit. That's the way it looks best. So leave it. Oh my mm-hmm. holy jeez! Sorry, I've got distracted. Look, <laughs> car classic. Still in the auctions. There's a two, there's a five oh five GTI oh, coming up. It's only got twenty seven thousand miles on it. It's, really, uh, it's an auto. But that car might be all right. <coughs> so I mean, it's not really a sporty car, is it? Despite the name, it's just that. Look at that! Really, see, now that's a handsome thing. That's I think a it is a good car. car. Oh. That's that's one of those cars. I didn't know how how handsome it was until they'd all gone. Yeah. Do you know Definitely. what? There's a there's a side profile picture of of this five hundred five here, and it's silver. And I swear, it it just at a very quick glance you can see its jeans coming through because it looks like... Do you remember there was a, a show car called the Ferrari Pinin, which was a four-door Ferrari? And it was very pretty. Uh, yeah, and, I do. It was and, pretty. And you can see a little bit of that that sort of gene pool of the Pinin in imagine the 505. If they, imagine if they brought that out now instead of something Urus-related. Well, they've, yeah, because they've got the, the pureed sandwiches on its way, isn't it? Like soon. <laughs> is that what you call it? <laughs> what is it called? Pure, pure sangue, I think is how it's uh. pronounced. But, yeah. I heard a rumour, because, you know, there's a couple of photos of it leaked from the factory, and it just sort of showed the front and the back. And they seem to be legit, but they don't show the sides. I've heard a rumour that it's got um, rear-hinged back doors. Really? Yeah. So it's quite interesting. What, off of uh, MX30 Mazda? Yes. <laughs> I was going to say Rolls Phantom, but yes, probably closer in size to an MX30. Or, or um, RX8s had them, didn't they, sort of? 
Yeah, our X8 did. Again, a car I miss. I actually miss seeing them. And um, I'm excited when I see one now, even though they're worth about 36 yeah, quid. Yeah. But I get do. Ready to, uh, get around to Shade's house and uh, she's, uh, she'll let you have a look at her. I, I still live in hope that we get an email through on this podcast from Sade or management of Sade who go, listen, oh. we know that. Well, now, speaking of musicians and cars, um, I've got. <laughs> It's <laughs> a couple of things. Wow. First of all, I've got a bit of a. I feel like I've got a bit of an in with Fish. What um, the lead singer out of, of uh, Marillion? Yeah, yeah, it turns out someone I know knows him. So I, I've asked for more information about the cars of Fish. But in the meantime, <laughs> a chap called Anthony got in touch. Uh, and the cars of Fish. He said, "He said Smith and Sniff. I know you like a celebrity car story and also have a mild obsession with Marillion." Well, I used to work on Stephen Rotheray's car. He's the one with the awful jacket on top oh. of the Pops video. Ah. I think. No offence, he's, he's literally half the height of fish. Uh, not an inappropriate American car, as you thought, but a late 80s Porsche 944 Turbo, which had been mildly modified. Mm. He owned it for a number of years and think he sold it in about 2015. I was tasked with removing the mods before sale. Sorry, I have no idea what car Fish drove. Well, don't worry, Anthony, because we're on to that one. But uh, there we go. So, Marillion <laughs> car information, uh, more when we have it. How do we go down these stupid cul-de-sacs, Richard? How do we do it? Know. We I never once know. asked for really more information. I'm sure we didn't. I, I love know. that about our listeners. Thank you, listeners. It's brilliant. Um, um, I- <laughs> lead singer of... Now, would you call Marillion soft rock? I don't know. Don't want to offend any uh, Marillion... I, people i mean it's not hard rock is it but... <laughs> oh god no uh it's like a it's like a a twix that you've left in the sun um <laughs> what you mean very mushy but then there's actually a, a sort of a crunchier bit underneath there is a crunchy and it's sometimes a surprisingly good guitar solo or something like that <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh gosh why now, Actually, while um, while we're doing a quick catch up, ca- catch up, round up, whatever you yep. call it, a, a stitch back desk <laughs> where we're, we're looking back at things we've mentioned in previous shows. Um, last week we were doing the Nissan GTR stuff, yeah, and chatting about how that car's been around since we believe the um, Iron Age, and then I found that car for sale at um, the GTR Heritage Centre and was somewhat puzzled by this. Well, in our YouTube comments, the owner of the GTR Heritage Centre has piped up. Really? Yeah. He starts his message, Ha-ha, hysterical cast. I actually own ye old GTR (laughs) centre, mentioned about 17 minutes in. Lol. We've got cars here dating back to 1964 up to the very latest 2021 track edition by Nismo. Stage 4.75433467 available with onboard donkey power and mead injection available for test drives. Oh, this is this is lovely. I We're love going this. to develop a mattress simcra edition just for you guys. Uh, don't leave a name, but anyway, if you are the owner of the old GTRE Centre, uh, thank you for that, and thank you for having a sense of humour about I, the important business of selling GTRs. I think that's wonderful. I, I, I secretly hope that it's going to feel a little bit like the sort of Jorvik Viking Centre, so it's an immersive experience, <laughs> so that when you turn up there, you can hear chickens clucking in the background, and there's maybe a sprinkling of straw on the ground. Straw, and Always they pipe straw. in smells. They they do they pipe in smells and there'll be some like an old man in a smock raking <laughs> or uh, muttering to himself <laughs> drinking out of a flagon and, and all of these things to go oh wow this is like a sort of period drama or something you go no 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 this no, is just, where we repair Nissan GTRs actually yeah it's just it's just just, yeah, just chicken flapping past you and you just straw everywhere you go no has it, has it had PPF mate yeah it has yeah yeah. <laughs> Uh, I now the Jorvik Viking Centre piping and smells always puzzle me because they're interesting, but they're not unpleasant <clears throat> smells as far as I can remember. I and never I went thinking, there, and I wanted to, and I never. Is I it think, still is going? It, oh, is it still there? I don't let know. Me, let me, let me, let me, hang on, let me look I mean, it. Up. It feels like York would collapse without it. It was like the thing in York. Apart from it was Rowan's amazing it. when it came out. If, if 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 people from a different country are listening to this. Um, it's not a theme park. Uh, it's a living. What would you call it? Like a, a mu- an immersive museum theme park. Yeah. 
I did it open in the eighties. I just feel like it was sort it of did. popular in the eighties. Absolutely and, did. But when museums were still very dusty and boring for the most part, and this was this was like this sort of interactive museum and it's, uh, it's I don't open. Know, like it's a open robot right now. Hen. Is it? Let's go. So, did you just say the just robot get a GTR hen. and drive to to the Jorvik Viking? Yeah, it is. Is it called it the really Jorvik is. Viking Centre? It's called the Jorvik Viking Centre. dot co. dot uk. Ah, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can call them now on oh one nine oh four six one double five oh five. And so there we go. Brilliant. <laughs> but, yeah, but then at the other end, they've just got a cup with a bit of string coming out of it. So don't expect them to actually answer. Oh yeah, they've they've still got some. They've got a virtual tour on their website, and there's also oh. a recent exhibition of a Silverdale hoard, which I believe is a large coin hoard. Um, the largest, one of the largest coin hoards in Britain. There you go. That ends my tour of the Jorvik Viking Centre for this podcast on this particular <laughs> episode. Um, I'll do another one in a couple of weeks' time. So I just the thing that that bothered me about the smells was I, I I remember thinking I bet that it didn't actually smell like this. I bet to modern nostrils it smelled absolutely disgusting. Oh, of course. You know silage, which I yes. quite like the smell of. I don't mind mm, silage. Very when I, sweet. Sickly very sweet. sweet. Yeah. Um, it, see, it seeps out of the bags. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it does, though, doesn't it? Those black, black bags. Yeah, well, um, I always think of silage as like the silage, because like, we used to know people who had a farm, and they, they had their silage heap. Yeah, which was all you know under tarp with tires on top of and it. car tires. Yeah, it was always old car tires and tractor mm. tires, and yeah, we used to play on it, but we get told off yeah. for playing on it yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Usual, usual situation. Um, but yeah, I think there'd be a strong smell of silage, but also more unpleasant smells mixed in as well. Yeah. Probably um, dead animals or people. Well, that's it. Yeah, I'm just thinking death and feces and yes. All uh, just just general sort of unwashedness because people yeah. didn't have soap and deodorant in the ways that we take. You know, we really have oh, humankind yeah. has yeah. has really scrubbed up and we've scrubbed up to the point where we've just released a load of microplastics into all the places that we rely on to live. But apart yes. from that, we're doing really well. Yeah, we have we sort yeah. of sort of fucked up, but um, but we are generally quite clean. Probably yeah. maybe cleaner than we need to be. I don't know. I'm yeah, of sure course you could argue are. that you know we could <clears> naturally be a bit musky. But but this the thing. I just bet that it, back then it just absolutely stank. I'm hoping now that the Jorvik Viking Centre are going to develop a magic tree to put inside <laughs> oh, your car. The smells of, of yeah, a, it's good PR. A rotting dog and human feces. Yeah, you know, like uh, or I do, I've always wondered why magic tree or another manufacturer of an air freshener for a car don't come up with a kind of vintage car smell oh because you can get new car smell right Mm, mm. and a lot of people comment to me about the the certain smell of a classic car that's evocative or you know a car that you grew up with that you just remember the smell like it was yesterday yeah or you own a car and one of the attracting things about it is you climb in and before you've even struck the engine up you go Oh, yeah. It smells of, I don't know, my dad's bad old leather jacket and rolling tobacco or whatever, or sunburnt mm. skin. Um, <laughs> I, or well, the way that your hair smells after a day out in the sunshine. Yes. Some, you know, something really odd like that that you can't quite put your finger on. Mm. I feel like maybe there should be, um, yeah, maybe some sort of magic tree. Uh, in fact, Richard, why have I said this out loud on a podcast? Let's develop it ourselves. Just giving away and ideas market again. it, and yeah. stiffly market it across this podcast. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay, yeah, we'll yeah. do that. Uh, not today, but we'll do it. I was we'll, we'll talking to a friend last weekend about uh, there's a, a, a hotel that is near her house that uh, there was rumoured to be a sort of swingers joint, <laughs> and I suddenly thought. Oh, Imagine what it smells like. Oh. Just because what I imagine is oh. that there's some kind of air freshener and it's just not powerful enough. So it's what you've got is that sort of overlay of 
uh, something the, uh, the that's original, quite nice the original smelling, sin. but you know, yeah, you know what's under there. You know what the yeah. chassis is underneath. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I, oh yeah. <laughs> um, it's very so anyway. true. It's a bit like, yeah, like an air freshener to try and cover up. We've said this before, you know, it's some sort of toilet sin. But you haven't quite. It's not quite strong enough, and there, there's a power struggle. What I'm saying is, there's a, a power, power struggle. struggle. It's just like <laughs> there is a you, power struggle, isn't your it? Your glade like, oh. plugins got all the faders pushed up to max, and it's just like mm, I haven't got any more in it. It's, <laughs> It's trying to bench press a, a, a PB, <laughs> isn't it? A PB of filth. <laughs> One of those little glass bottles with a load of sticks coming out the top. It's like absolutely <laughs> pinned to the floor in second. But unfortunately, <laughs> the lampoon is winning. Um, yeah, well. who needs a Tyson Fury fight? I just want to put these two in the ring. In the, in the blue corner, a pot of... Uh, I don't know what it is, but it's got sticks sticking out of it. <laughs> that infuse, apparently. I think it's from the white company, probably. Yeah, in the right, the right hand corner, a pavement pizza <laughs> outside Iceland <laughs> on Saturday morning. Interesting. Well, and interesting. I was, I was just look. I, I actually wrote down something to talk about, but I, I did. I tell you how my wife got her hair trapped in the sunroof of our car. What? <laughs> yeah. Which car? <laughs> Range Rover. So what? it's what? it's a it was a beautiful day. We're all driving along as a family. Lovely sunny day. Open the sunroof. It's nice. Uh, my wife's particularly. Oh. I, she loves a car with a sunroof because I think because she grew up in Arizona where you wouldn't really have a car with a sunroof because it's too hot for the most. Oh, part. Oh, it's a so novelty to her. It's still. a bit of a novelty, and so she absolutely loves a sunroof. She has an above average interest in sunroofs. I would say. <laughs> and, I love um, that. Yeah, it's a thing. She just thought she because it just it's one of those things where it sort of it rarely occurs to me to open the sunroof on a car. Weirdly, the convertible, I love the top down loads. You know, you know, I, I can't. It really annoys me when you see people with convertible cars and you go, "It's a lovely what day. Are you doing? What are you doing?" Yeah, I agree. But, Very much um, agree. But a sunroof sort of, I just forget about it, or I forget that it opens because you know some cars with glass roofs it doesn't. But we open the sunroof and we're we're cruising along. It's lovely, but then we got onto a faster road. And it's getting a bit blustery. And and it was sucking her hair up out right. of the sunroof to the amusement of our children. And then I went, oh, we should probably close that because it's getting a bit. And she's like, yeah, I know, it's really messing with my hair. And she sort of swooshed her hair down as she went for the button to close the sunroof but not enough and there was still a big strand of hair which then got trapped in the sunroof and she was going this thing where she's she was suddenly panicked she's like it's got my hair it's got it's got it's, it's but then couldn't because she didn't want to sort of move her head too much she couldn't look up to locate the switch so i was i was like don't just just hold on i've got it and it was a moment of panic because of course i was driving so i couldn't give it my full attention but i was conscious that my wife was effectively sort of hanging from the roof of the car so Amazing. yeah a, a hidden danger of something i've never seen that happen before i don't know whether it's some kind of you know aerodynamic quality of, of that car particularly or what but it just yeah it, it sucked some hair into the sunroof as it closed and um if she'd been on her own she may have been trapped there for a while um, i never knew that that anyone had trapped their hair in a sunroof but i I have two related short stories, so don't worry. The short. <laughs> um, the uh, <laughs> one of them was when I first drove the Ford GT, which was what two thousand and four, was it? The the yeah, um, I guess so. It's the one which Jeremy Clarkson famously bought and then sold instantly. Um, yes. I trapped my hair at the time. I had a lot of hair. I trapped my hair in the door because you know the door cuts oh. in, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, I, and as soon as I'd done it, I realised what I'd done and I sort of froze and I couldn't really reach to get the... I really hurt I hurt my hair. I didn't lose hair because of it, but I did trap my hair in it. Uh, so that's my first memory of the Ford GT, along with Martin Brundle flying in and pointing at it and going, I've got an hour before I've got to fly to the GP. Give me the Ford GT keys, I'll make something happen. And he what? went off and... yeah. Where this was, was this? When I was working on Car Magazine at the time. Oh, right. And we were doing Performance Car of the Year off of Anglesey Circuit. And, oh. um, and they'd hired, or I don't know, Sweet Talked Martin Brundle, and he flew in en route to a Grand Prix he was going to. And oh, right. the chopper landed, still rotors spinning. 
Um, <laughs> picture this, slow motion, very, very thin necklace chain, slightly unbuttoned shirt, gets off and basically just says hi and, but points at the, the, this red 4GT uh, press car and says, let's take that out, let's see what we can do. And then just goes for an absolute screech around the circuit in it. And then... The guy, his pilot, I, I don't, I don't know. I think he, I don't know if it was his helicopter or not. The pilot said, "Oh well, if you want to get any photographs from up there." So the camera, the, the photographer, got in the chopper and hovered over the start finish straight, and we got some epic shots of the Folds GT. Sorry, I forgot ah. to say Ford properly originally. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was that was fun. Um, this was a separate instance of you getting your hair trapped, though. No, you this was the same day. Yeah, but you weren't in the car with Brundle, unable no, to tell him that your head no. was trapped against the ceiling. No, I didn't. I was just, I was, I was very low in the rankings at the magazine, so I didn't really get a chance to speak to Brundle very much. Although I've oh. since met him again a few times. In fact, with you, met him in um, California. Oh yes, yeah, of yeah. course, of course, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but I love uh, how casually we just. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. He's a nice like guy. I, 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 I. I know him a little bit from seeing him around i think i think the last time i saw him he called me a bandit but i think he meant it as a compliment he could, really yeah actually well he didn't he didn't say the bandit directly to me i was talking to him and a guy came up and said oh martin how are you doing someone he knew in the motorsport world and and then brundle went oh by the way steve do you know this bandit richard porter and i was a bit like i think it's a compliment i quite like that i don't know Brundle's Bandits. You're a member Brundle's of this clan. Bandits. Yeah. You, that, yeah, yeah. It's him, you, you're all outlaws. You, you live by your own rules. Yeah. Um, um, what do you do? You ride motorbikes very, without very, helmets. Yeah. Very thin gold chains <laughs> is, is the way that you identify fellow gang members. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not a backpatch club. It's a thin necklace club. <laughs> <laughs> it's <laughs> a little bit more, a little bit more covert. Um, yeah, and there was another incident that I was going to say, but I got carried away talking about Martin Brundle and choppers. Getting your uh, hair trapped? Have you got more than one getting your hair trapped story? In which case, yeah. that's, I'd say that's two more than most people. There was. There, and one more than my wife. No, there was another. Oh, I know, sunroof. It's not not as interesting as that. I, I, I actually opened the sunroof on a courtesy car yesterday because it was a warm day, hmm. um, but I don't like air conditioning. And I wanted to make a phone call, so I didn't want to crack the windows down. So mm. I just cheekily tilted the sunroof, and it was bliss. It's absolute oh, bliss. Tilted. I did yeah. a cheeky tilt, one button to tilt, two yeah. two pushes to slide all the way back. Oh, Amazing. I always think of that's a smoker's tilt, isn't it? I think a smoker's tilt. A smoker's tilt. I love just that. Like, you just just tilt it just to just to get a bit of airflow through Where's without to get having the- to. It's you the know, tobacco. The it's the it's the nicotine venturi, yes. isn't it? That you want to create. You have to you have to get the airflow rushing through, but it not be noisy and irritating. Yeah. That's the key, isn't um, it? I have to ask, courtesy you, car. Yeah. What what was the courtesy <clears throat> car and why? I'm glad you mentioned it. Thanks, Richard. Um, <laughs> the <laughs> the Jimny is overdue for two recalls. Uh, uh, it's needed two recalls for some time, but there's been a real backlog or, or back order, should I say, of um, the parts required for the um, the um, the recalls. And the recalls are the, uh, needs an, it has to have the fuel pump changed, and it has to have the door oh. harness changed. Both door what? harnesses, yeah, all what? the wiring into the doors, apparently. Because of what? I don't know. I mean, there's no technology in the door, so I don't know. (laughs) Although Toyota had that trouble back when they just seemed to be having in in recall hell. They had an issue with the electric window switches. Ah. And uh, they were getting too hot or something, or they could do. I forget. And the wiring was maybe getting a little bit. Something. There was something where there was just this, like, sort of, you know, a million in one chance that in certain circumstances, it could get so hot that you'd go, ooh, my switches are a bit hot, and they decided to recall every car they've ever made. Um, but, okay, okay, interesting. So, so the Jimny's gone in for the recall, okay, and it's quite an involved job. So mm, uh, the fuel like pump. It. Yeah, so they said, um, Suzuki were really good, actually, and they were like, why don't you just take this, and it's an SX4, uh, sorry, an, is it an SX4 S-Cross? 
it's got all these badges on the back. I'll show you the picture. I was chuckling. <laughs> SX, SX4, S-Cross, Hybrid, All Grip. That's four separate badges <laughs> all on one side of the boot, which I love. But you know what? I looked at it and went, well, you know, it's just a, it's a fairly generic looking car. Mm. I got in it and drove it home and it's so quick. It's really quick. And I'm not joking. It's it's so much faster and e- more eager than you're expecting it to be. I had an absolute oh. hoot driving it back. I'm gonna I'm gonna take it out for a blat uh, later on today. Really mm. enjoy myself. I mean, I look. I know it's a courtesy car. They are the fastest cars on earth. We yes, know this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could have taken my um, Gordon Murray T33 in for a service. And they could have given me a Fiat Punto, and we all know the Punto would have been quicker than the T thirty three. This is this is not. I think actually that's Gordon Murray does have an old Punto, doesn't he, for for as a courtesy car for his customers. I hope uh, he does. He, would he, or would he just, go Panda? He'd probably go Panda. Oh, for lightness, he, yes, he yeah. would go Panda. Yes, you're right. But he hasn't yeah. told anyone. But he's he put a stage four point two seven eight um, tune in it. Um, oh. By the way, sorry, I forgot to say earlier on when we were talking about Skylight or GTRs again, rather, yeah. that um, uh, quite a few people got in touch to point out the 4.25, the stage 4.25 mm. tune that we were puzzled by in some of those GTR ads. It's a Litchfield thing, apparently. Oh, is it? Uh, various people pointed that out. But yeah, it is a known thing in the GTR world because it's a Litchfield tune for those cars. So. Right, OK. So it's That's us. That one sorted. It's us just not knowing enough, yeah. Just being idiots, yeah. Souls. OK. I, I'd like um, someone to write down um, what the sort of a, like a medical paper of what what the true definitions of stage one to five is. <laughs> Do I don't know that it's, but it's it's just it's a fluid thing, isn't it? It's almost like exchange rates or stocks and shares, you know, it just moves on a daily basis. Well, could someone write, uh, could we have a paper written on all of the cars and all of their stages? I just think at the end of Newsnight, they maybe just go, oh, just a quick time, look at the markets. Uh, FTSE the pound is down against the yen, uh, <laughs> but slightly up against the dollar to uh, 142. And finally, uh, stage two. Up slightly now includes a competition air filter and braided hoses. That's it. That's all we've got time for. Thank you for watching. That's a wonderful thing. Can we do that? Yeah, well, we do. It's also it's like I've told you before about it. our mate Jim, you know, Jim and uh, Jim and I, when we worked on Top Gear in the early days, we used to drive down to the studio at Dunsfold together every Wednesday morning and we would stop at the same petrol station every week <laughs> and get a coffee. And the, the, uh, the what we developed was that this petrol station had, at that point, quite a high collection of smut mags on its top shelf. Oh, gosh, right. And so the game was one of us would go and get the coffee machine going while the other one walked over to the smut shelf and would then, bear in mind it was usually about sort of 6, 6.30 in the morning, there's no one else in there. The other one would have to start reading out the smut mag headlines <laughs> in the style of Jeremy Paxman at the end of Newsnight. Oh God! So, you know he would sort of go the sun go with political crisis consumes government, and so it would be. So you get the coffee machine going, and then and one of us would be standing over there going, "Razzle going with lick my titties and men only bend me over and slap my big <laughs> bum." That's it. That's all the time for. Thank you for watching. And- men only. Oh God! <laughs> Does men only still go? I don't. Been I don't. This know. is about two thousand and three. So, I mean, geez, it's almost 20 years ago. Mm. I don't really know the state of the Grot Mag market these days. I've, I, I, I'm always amazed well, when occasionally you, 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 you see one. <laughs> <laughs> the Smutsy 100 in <laughs> The Smutsy 140. Uh, yeah. It's, um, well. I'm sure someone listening to this podcast knows the state of affairs for that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> on that side of things. Uh, oh, that's what it would be called. It'd be the Smutsy Hot Sot. The wouldn't Smutsy it? Hot Sot. It's a legitimate currency. It's completely <laughs> legitimate. It's a market. It's, a, it's always fares well against oil and gas. Yeah. I find. Yeah. Uh, I feel like sure. we've come off the tracks a little bit here. But, yeah, we um, have. We have. I'm oh, really well, now, hey, can we. Can we talk about those messages from your dad that you forwarded to me? <laughs> uh, yes, from Bob. Yeah, uh, WhatsApps I'm, from Bob. I, I'm always mildly, not horrified, but embarrassed to be reminded that your parents listen to this podcast. Oh, I know. I don't like the fact they listen to it. I love my parents. They're great. But I wish they wouldn't listen to this. Mm, I can't force them not to. 
No, but <laughs> it's really it's a, sweet. It's a free They're cast. They're listening to your your work. Do they? Are they doing it to sort of see what you're up to because you don't ring them enough is, yeah is they're, they're, i think it's a combination of that but also it's just they're proud of my work although I, I probably wouldn't listen to, to smith and sniff if my <laughs> son had done it but uh there we go <laughs> i certainly wouldn't be proud of it um uh, but no, it's really nice that they they do when they are so yeah um, i get the occasional message sort of saying i enjoyed that bit that bit wasn't so good so this, this one i <laughs> This one I, I might get, I might get, and really enjoyed the Jorvik Viking Centre. Uh, forgot that it was still very successful enterprise. Didn't enjoy the bit about where you were talking about men only. Yeah, not so no, much that. No, no, just, just, you have to be so smutty. This is it. I remember, or you remind me that your parents listened. I'm like, oh my God, we swore in the last one. In fact, we swore, mm. we swear in all of them. And yeah. I, I wouldn't swear in front of your parents. They're your parents. Like, yeah, I know it's it's difficult for me. Richard, it's difficult for me. Well, maybe we should try and do a non swearing because I also we sometimes get messages from listeners and they go, "Oh, we're listening in the car as a family." And I'm like, "Oh, family? Well, who, who was there? Like you <laughs> children? I hope children weren't there because we did a whole sequence about bongo mags." <laughs> we should do a clean version, a DPF clean version. Yeah. Where you, you, you know what I mean? You cut it open, your it all compatible. Out. Yeah. yeah. Should we do yeah. a? Uh, well, we just let's just. Edition. I don't know. It's too late now. But next week, well, I, I really hate beeps. I hate beeping out swearing. It's just I, it, it, somehow you? it just annoys. Yeah, I mean, obviously you have to sometimes. I don't, you know, I don't hate it if it's sort of mandated by Ofcom because it's a TV show that's going out at seven in the evening. But yeah. I, I just in something like this, I just think I don't. I don't everyone knows swear words. Well. But I suppose if you're playing it in front of children, maybe we... I don't know. Next week, we'll try not to swear. That's that's just... Let's see if we can do it. I actually can't remember the messages that my parents sent me that you wanted to talk oh, about. Have well, you no, you, 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 forward, you forwarded them to me, and I know... When was it? I know that the first one was made me giggle hysterically in an airport, so it was probably about <laughs> two weeks ago when I went I'm, to I'm just scrolling. I'm, I'm going scrolling. back through messages you've sent me, and there's so much... What a, what a rich <laughs> seam of nonsense. There's this <laughs> clip you sent me of Quincy Jones... Um, oh yeah! In the studio with yeah. Herbie Hancock, where Quincy Jones suddenly produces a glass of wine <laughs> quite close to a fair light. Um, oh yeah, like hovering over an expensive synthesizer with a glass of white. Yeah, just go like, steady, so Quincy. Yeah. Steady. How many of those have you had? Those things are about ten grand each. Yeah. Um, the reason why I said that to you is because I want. I actually wanted. It would have been two podcasts ago. Now. I uh, mm. wanted to just uh, say say happy birthday to Herbie Hancock, but uh, it's obviously a little bit late now, it's so a bit I won't. Late. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, Sorry, Herbie was Herbie was Herbie. like eighty three three weeks ago yeah. or something, and he's still got the AC Cobra that he bought brand new in nineteen sixty two. Seriously, seriously, and the, wow. the the man is the man is even more of a dude than I thought he was. Oh, that's uh, really and cool. I, and I thought I'd mention that because uh, Jay Leno did a cool piece on going out for a drive with him in it mm. and just talking about the backstory of why on earth he owns it and why on earth he's kept it for so long. And it was, it's just wonderful. You should... Uh, did, did Leno go, come on, Herbie, let's go out for a drive. We'll we'll leave Quincy here. And Quincy Jones is just sort of pouring himself another enormous Merlot and go, yeah, yeah you're okay, guys. <laughs> no, here. Quincy's like, I'll follow behind him by Cadillac Seville. <laughs> no, you, please yeah. don't. Quincy, you've had a bottle and a half. <laughs> <laughs> of Zinfandel please stay here <laughs> they get back and he's like oh Herbie man I'm so sorry I seem to have spilled something on your fe- DX7 I fell asleep on the on the, <laughs> oh, on the mixing desk fuck. I fell asleep on the emulator and it's just been going oh, for about an hour <laughs> <laughs> I fell asleep at work on a keyboard once I'm pretty sure I mentioned this in a, in a Smith and Smith video blooming years ago yeah, I feel like I did you a did, bit of, yes. did a bit of day drinking, which I wasn't used to because I was only 19. <laughs> it was my first proper job. And I, I had to put my head down for a while. <laughs> I don't put it down onto the keyboard, yeah. There was just pages of nonsense. Oh, man. You know, it was my birthday last week. Um, yeah. And, uh, and I did. I managed to do five days of things because I had, I had back-to-back gigs, which was nice. But then I also had... Um, lunch out with some friends I had dinner out with some other friends and then my wife and I the day after my birthday which I started referring to as birthday boxing day 
we went to the pub for lunch, just the two of us. And then it started absolutely wazzing it down. And I hadn't brought a coat. And we got the dog with us. And I didn't want her to get wet because she stinks when she's wet. So I, uh, I just went, well, we better stay here. So we stayed in the pub and had a couple more pints. And, and it was a proper day drinking. But that was the last of my five days of really milking my birthday. And the following day, I felt the worst. It's like I sustained for five days going, oh, I feel all right. I feel okay. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> Getting older is okay. Was it the, that bad? Yeah. The sixth day, was I was just like, really um, like a damp bag. It was just horrible. Oh. Anyway, that'll teach me. I'll learn you. I've just looked one of these messages. I, I realized we had a, we had an exchange because I, I was I asked you what Michael McDonald drives. I think because I was somewhere where they were playing Michael McDonald. And um, <laughs> was it Yamo uh, B there? Would have uh, been. Wouldn't it? I can't or remember. Sweet freedom. Oh, it was. It was <laughs> yeah. Um, because I, yeah. I was suggesting he drives a Cadillac Alante, and um, <laughs> and, and you, <laughs> your suggestion was he used to have a Shat Cadillac, but these days he's gone Palm Springs Lexus <laughs> with a corded <laughs> mic in the centre armrest that he can <laughs> sing lyrics into. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Michael McDonald's got quite a big face from him, a bit like Kenny Rogers. Um, he, yes, yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking he will have those sunglasses which have a folding nose bridge and they fit into <laughs> the, the <laughs> belt. Like, like, <laughs> shit, petrol station aviators. <laughs> they don't, they don't yeah. sit straight. They, they never don't, sit the arms they, and never, never They sit never sit right. straight. <laughs> and, and across the top, they'll have. A sort of um, speedy font, and it'll say it'll say something like speedster, yeah, or, uh, or <laughs> fast line. It'll say fast line, yeah. and you just go what on glasses? Yeah. Something really inexplicable, like yacht magic down one arm. But they don't. They always they make you look like you're Eric Morecambe doing a skit because they sit at such an angle on your face. It looks like you're doing it for comic effects. You go, Michael. You what's the gag here? I'm not seeing it. What? What are you talking about? You're sunk. Oh, never mind. It's the folding nose bridge glasses that someone's already sat on, and they're like, that's it. <laughs> he, he just folded them up, but he put them in his front trouser pocket for some reason without the case. And oh, it's trash. It's it's just microscopically sent everything a little bit more out of whack, and that's. <laughs> Well, you need to Dance put them on a jig. Dreams. <laughs> Got to put them on a specialist jig. <laughs> I don't, there's not a jig made that can pull them back to straight because they, yeah. they, they're always going to be slightly on the bonk. <laughs> um, what, an, an aviator sunglasses accident jig that Michael McDonald, <laughs> that Michael Michael McDonald. McDonald has invested in. He's finally got <laughs> sick of... Of everyone taking the piss out of him, and so yeah, he's he's invested millions in developing a foldable faux aviator jig that can bring them back to true. Still doesn't work. You got to leave them on there for like a month just to get it right. Just to get it right, they t- just yeah. tweaks it ever but so then slightly. He, he's driving out to a, a gig in Reno. With the roof back on his SC430. Oh, he's got an SC430, your penny has. And just the heat alone microscopically warps the thin, cheap metal arms of his petrol <laughs> station aviator. And he's back to square one. <laughs> just buy station. some Ray-Bans, Michael. You're no. a well-to-do man. No, I love these. I just, I've had them since 1984. <laughs> Well, not only that, though, because they're petrol station glasses, he buys them at sort of ten at a time and puts them in different drawers <laughs> in different cars. And he tells me, but they, none of them quite fit, do they? So yeah. the- These ones have Ferrari written on them, but with only one R in the middle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. It'd be a, a, a silhouette of a, of a raging bull, but it'll say yes. Maserati <laughs> on it. Yeah. With a Z. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> oh gosh, well, we're a pair of tossers, aren't we? I found the message that you forwarded to me uh, from your dad. Oh, it says, uh, "By the way, Mum said to me the other day, Jonathan and Richard say twat a lot. I know it's rude, but I don't know what it means." <laughs> My standard reply to this, and why does he talk about Brian so much, is, "You'll have to ask him. I hope she does, or I'll have to stop being a coward and explain." <laughs> Oh, Dad. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, my throat hurts after that. I, so, I do remember him sending <clears> me that. Bless him. Uh, I didn't think we did say twat that much, but clearly we, we're we not. We're just. It's a swearing free for all, isn't it? So, um, uh, I now feel like I'm interrupting family business. This is not mine. To Buzznos. Yeah. Buzznos. <clears throat> What was the next one? He sent me another one about a Suzuki Splash. I just realised I sent you all of Didn't the lyrics of that mad Italian song that, oh, that gosh, you found. That, that was embarrassing. Which, um, um, ma, what's it called? Ma quale idea? It was awful. Just awful. But, it, but sort of mesmerisingly awful. Yeah. Um, He's probably made a handsome living from it and bedded many sweethearts off the back of it in certainly. the 80s. Uh, oh, yes, I've got the one about the Splash. Here you go. <laughs> was that the follow-up you from said, my dad? Latest message from my dad, and the message is: followed a splash with Sue fucking Zuki Deckel below number plate and skull on the parcel shelf. <laughs> <laughs> Coming the other that. way was a modern Citroen, the shape reminiscent of the DS19. Mum mentioned you say twat too much again. <laughs> with a, with a sort love of that as a footnote, it's yeah. Just, just, does your dad message you a lot? Yeah, we we. He, he, in, they, they both enjoy a bit of WhatsApp. Dad's a big fan of WhatsApp. Yeah. Oh. Mm. I sometimes get pictures of things he's seen on his, on his walks or his. <laughs> yeah, he's good. I, I'm try, I was trying to remember what, what was the modern Citroen that he saw. What would it have been? A modern Citroen reminiscent <clears throat> of the shape of the DS19. Because dad, um, dad, dad remembers the, when the DS19 was launched. He said it was incredible, like a spaceship. Yeah. Um, he said, "If you saw one driving down, you know, a drab street in Leicester, it just looked like something oh my God, dropped from another planet." Blow your mind! But I don't know what that would be. What would that uh, be? Modern I Citroen that looks yeah. like a DS19. You're gonna have to ask him. Yeah, well, I'll ask him. But unfortunately, he'll, he might follow it up with. Mum's also mentioned again about <laughs> TW Ampersante or whatever. Well, anyway, the good news for your mum and people who listen with children is next week it's no swearing is it yeah all clean all day smith and Snip. we'll forget i'm sure we'll forget and one of us will say fanny batter by mistake <laughs> catalytic but... converter edition all clean <laughs> all of the time yeah. i sort of feel like uh yeah smith and sniff might have in like like car makers in the 80s might have inadvertently tried to go down the lean burn route oh, and, i like uh, a bit of lean burn do you remember when Lean Burn, they were going, oh, Lean Burn might be better than doing cats. Just to, Ford, Ford had a bit of a thing with Lean Burn, didn't they? But yeah. I don't know, was it, was it bollocks? I can't remember. This, uh, this Honda Insight oh, of mine has Lean Burn mode. Does it? Well, yeah, I, mean, I think I... a lot of cars do, don't they? In, in the, but it yeah. still have cats. Yeah. There's nothing yeah. wrong with Lean Burn per se, but just in terms of cleaning up emissions, it possibly wasn't as effective as the catalyst. And of course, it used less in the way of precious metals. Precious, um, precious <clears throat> metals. Look, we should probably uh, just stop this. Yeah, we now. should. I think that's, that's, <laughs> en- that's enough. That's enough <laughs> silly bands for the week. Stop Although, it. thanks oh. to everyone that mentions that they listen to this and it peps yes. on Mondays. Yeah, we suddenly had a flurry of really nice messages last week, and it was just like, oh, why is everyone being nice to us? I mean, there's been no significant change in the quality of the show. Yeah. So that's for sure. I did want to say, uh, Charlie Bird, the chap who tried to get uh, references to this show into a post-race interview, listened to uh, you saying that you wanted to sponsor his racing car, and he has said he's going to try and stick some stickers on his M3. Get out. Really? So thank you, Charlie. Yeah, we need to actually message Charlie and see if we can uh, we'll sort him out with some stickers. We'll get some decals, yeah. Get that all around. Oh, thank you, Charlie. But I realised when I listened back to that podcast that at some point you... <laughs> You, you use the phrase toss cars, and I suddenly thought toss cars was quite a good name for a race series. Uh, and in fact, perhaps I, Charlie would like to compete in it. Do I but, say so, toss cars? You said toss cars, in, you know, as in cars that are toss. But but I thought that like you've got champ car and euro cars and all these sort of things. I thought toss cars is quite a good. It would be like a sort of lemons style racing series. Oh, I, I'd like that very much. I'd love to do a lemon style. Um, event or gather thingy, whatever. Johnny Smith's Toss Cars. Johnny live Smith's from, Toss Cars. Where would you have it though? Somewhere a bit, you know. Uh, not, you wouldn't have it at Silverstone. It's too <clears throat> prestigious. No, it'd be one um, of those gloomy airfields that isn't marked out with any kind of particular track. <laughs> so there's just like you know, on the horizon, there's like a 12-inch high cone that looks like a speck of dirt when you're doing 100 miles an hour. 
<laughs> I would it'd be one of those. I've done a few track days at those, and I've nearly come across. Yeah. So I'm yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. dude, can we not get some better markers? I'm concentrating on like, you know, hanging on in there on the car. Yeah, it's Need quite some- an interesting place, though, isn't it? Because it's always got a really, really big hanger that's now being used by like a pallet company or something. Always. Always, and there's also, and they never tell you what might be in the grass. So if you if you if you yeah. if you cut the corner or you have a bit of a moment and you think, oh, it's okay, it's just a load of sort of like a, you know marsh grass. No, it's not. There's a no. massive Cold War block of something in there, and it's going to do <laughs> yes. you. It's going to do you. <laughs> oh yeah, that's where they used to keep the warheads. Sorry, we should have warned you. Oh, by the way, there's a bit of the airfield you can't go in, which is denoted only by a row of cones because it's used for the police training school or a company that stores cherry pickers. Oh yeah, very true. It's so true. We've just described all of the um, all, 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 all of the airfields, airfields. In, in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so true. Well, if you own one of these things and the um, the company that stores cherry pickers aren't taking up too much room. Johnny would like to hold his inaugural Toss Cars Racing. <laughs> I would actually. He's there, please. Well, Wayne Carini's got chasing classic cars. I mean, Johnny Smith chases Tossy cars. I think it could be quite nice, couldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and on that note. On that note, before we go, uh, I've got three things to tell you. They are one. Uh, Johnny has a solo YouTube channel. It's called The Small Owl Show, in which he meets people who collect porcelain ornaments of <laughs> owls. Uh, <laughs> and, then, and then tries to steal one or smash it without them noticing. Um, if <laughs> that's not up your street, then <laughs> try The Late Break Show, which has got many wonderful videos about cars. Uh, and we have news. news. Late Break Show Live is back. It's happening later this year. It is. Summer. Summer. August. August. First weekend of. In the middle of the country. In a field. So go on, yes. It's- that, that, was, that was it. That was my big ramp. Oh, I was going to say, bear in mind, it. just before we started recording, you had to ask me to remind you of the dates. Um, yes. But I believe it's the 6th and 7th of August. So, yes. Um, and uh, two, two days. Two we'd, days, we'd two love shows, you, two days. Two days, two shows. We'd love you to come. All of the, if you went to any of the late break show um, on tour events last year, it's kind of more of the same. Um, it'll be larger, hopefully, but the same calibre of vehicles, same silliness on stage, and the same really cool people that turn up and buy a ticket. That's you, mm. in brackets. Yeah. Um, nice people, and, Our yeah, people, car people. Yeah. Um, a, a, you know, a, a, a good mix of all the the playlists that the show has so ev classic modified barn find uh probably some two wheel shizzle and also probably some trade stands um and yeah and richard will be there obviously i'll be there on stage there. chatting on stage and off stage yeah, I was, chatting. I was already, yeah we, we go and we go and work the crowd <clears throat> and, and and to chat to people and things but we'll be on stage and we'll do uh, a quiz and we'll do a QA and a uh, and probably a few other things on stage as well we'll be reenacting a car chase from <laughs> um <laughs> from a touch of frost in 1993 <laughs> in a new segment we're calling low speed car chase roundup that's right um <clears throat> yes can't afford to get the footage all described. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, but we'd love so, it. Yeah, in all seriousness, we'll put um, the link in the show notes below of how you can find out more. I mean, the website thelatebreakshow dot com will tell you everything you need to know. But uh, wonderful to have you along uh, on that side mm. of things. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, second thing I've got to tell you is I've got various books out, but you know that, so I'm not going to tell you what they're called. <laughs> uh, we've also got merchandise relating to Smith & Sniff. Go to thelatebreakshow.com while you're looking at the live show date, 6th and 7th of August, remember, uh, and uh, go and buy a Smith & Sniff T-shirt or a mug or a yeah. sticker or something like that. Yeah, I've uh, got a mug right here. I'm drinking out of it, and I'm not, I'm not afraid to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the third thing I've got to tell you is that the first ever branch of Spudgy Like was opened in Edinburgh. What? Really? <laughs> Yeah, that's oh such a God. rubbish, such that's... a rubbish fact. But I saw it the other day, and I thought, I'm having that nonetheless. Uh, what so, spud, you like <clears throat> to sum up? Uh, I don't what think. Have we ha- I reckon to sum up. Actually, I don't yeah. think Harry Ramsden has ever really made fish and chips, and that's why every time I've had a Harry Ramsden's fish and chips, it's been disappointing. Really, I don't think they really know how to fry fish and chips. 
I haven't had a Harry Armstrong for years. I suspect they've diluted the brand by opening lots of branches, haven't they? But when, when it just used to be like that one in Yorkshire, I, I went there and it was nice. That's because probably Harry was still frying the fish. Now, mm, probably. Now it's others. It's no good. Mm. Um, Noel Gallagher's extra long, thin <laughs> brundle bracelets. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say Noel Gallagher's high fructose corn syrup for some reason. <laughs> Do you know you said it? You said you messaged me the other day, and I did how? What was it? Noel Gallagher's unregistered cars? What, what was oh, it called? No, no, I think it was Noel Gallagher's delivery mileage fiestas, oh, no. which I don't know why that doesn't even work with the with the the, the high thing. But it's just because it popped into my head, and I couldn't stop thinking about it. <laughs> Noel Gallagher's pre-registered fiestas. Yeah, that's it. He's just he loves a bargain. So yeah. he waits till the end of the month and he's combing his local dealerships just looking for some pre-reg cars they need to get shot of and he'll buy one for him and one for his girlfriend and then there'll be one of those people yeah. who've got two of the same car. But one of the, yeah, his girlfriend's name is on the books so he just <laughs> siphons them through, doesn't he? All right, well, oh, there no. we go. Uh, we've really, we've not put, brought this one into land very quickly. At all, but, no. It's, but we I are think going. it's circling the airfields. Desperately shedding or the drain important bits of engine. <laughs> yes, or the drain. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I've gashed me sump on some hidden cold war concrete, and I'm off. I'm off. I now. feel like one of these weeks. I just, we're just, I'm just going to put a fade on it, and we'll just keep talking. I'll just slowly fade it out. And, um, <laughs> Shall we? Really carry it's like a prog rock. Prog rock. Just expecting the music, but no. no. Let's just assume they kept on talking for another 19 minutes, and everybody just slowly walked away. And just just bring in like a track like Two Tribes Going to War by Frankie Goes to Hollywood. <laughs> you know? Something like that. <laughs> that that I think if anyone can put that on at the end, so we'd have to pay yeah, the royalties, we, that'd be great. We, yeah, we can't copyright. We can we can just put some in.